left. And then something happened. This miserable, uh, stinking, uh, hungry, dysentery plagued place overnight was built up to be a beautiful town. They started to make a park with a gazebo in it, and in this gazebo was a music uh, uh, band playing music in the afternoon. People were strolling in the park, dressed much better. There were a street with a coffee house. There was no coffee, but there was a coffee house. There was a bank. There was no money, but there was a bank with stores. I, and uh, there were uh, little uh, play playgrounds for children. There was a soccer field. I mean, things that was uh, unbelievable. And uh, we m knew this is all phony and baloney because our life be didn't become, our rations didn't come become bigger. But uh, we knew what it was all about because we were told there will be a movie crew to come in to film for the outside world what a wonderful gift Hitler gave to the Jews that he gave them a town which is more or less like a retirement place. By the way, the Germans that came with transports were under the, opi were under the uh, opinion that they came to a retirement place. They were told in Germany, they were given the order to pay, I don't know how many thousands of marks, because it is for their retirement in Theresienstadt and that they will have their apartment and they have their cleaning crew and everything was promised to them. For them, that was quite a, a shock when they saw what they came into. So this crew of the Red Cross came from Denmark and filmed these Potemkin villages. It was just a facade and it took them a week to make this movie and we had to uh, parade uh, in front of the bank and the coffee house, and we had to listen to the concerts. And uh, then they were finished with their work. Uh, it was quite obvious that they don't believe what they saw. But they went, and in this moment, all of Theresienstadt crumbled and was destroyed. Because from this moment on, Every day, transport after transport left, and Theresienstadt was emptied out.